So hello and welcome to this new uh, guys guide tutorial. Today we're gonna talk about object types. So uh, let's start. Uh, let's open the control panel with you uh, and we can use uh, Alt V to open the type visibility pane here. So um, here we can see there's a lot of buttons, each one uh, with its own icon and when we hover over these uh, we see a uh, tooltip which uh, sometimes uh, tells us uh, about a keyboard shortcut, for example, this. So, um, just one second. I will uh, open the preferences or the settings dialog, go to interface and I'll click on this checkbox. Uh, what this does is uh, it will uh, upscale the user interface so that uh, we can see it better. So um, the user interface will be uh, doubled in size, basically. So save preferences and now we can start again. So LT, uh, we open the type visibility and yeah, as you can see here, uh, these buttons, uh, each button with its own icon. Uh, and uh, when we hover over each of these, uh, we get a name. So for example, here it says stars and there's a keyboard shortcut. Uh, in this case is uh, shift S. So this means uh, when I click on this, the stars will disappear. So as you can see, it's not blue anymore. This means it's uh, disabled. And I can also use, use uh, Shift S uh, to uh, produce the same effect. So for example, for planets is Shift V. So I'll go ahead and, and uh, click on uh, or press Shift key. And as you can see, the planets disappear. I'll, I'll do it again. And the planets reappear. Um, other types, uh, for example, the moons. So now the moons have uh, just disappeared. You don't see uh, that in the scene because uh, we didn't have any moon in side, but maybe we can um, visit Mars. So I'll press F to bring up the search dialog. And now I'll type in Mars. And as you can see, we have now focused on Mars and we'll move closer to it. And we see there's no moons there. I'll click here on the moons. And as you can see, the moons of Mars appear uh, and it's got two moons, uh, Deimos and Phobos. So focus is here, we can double click on it and Deimos is somewhere uh, around, yeah, there. That's Deimos here, as you can see now I'm focused on Deimos and let's uh, visit it also. Okay, so uh, next up uh, is satellite, so, or spacecraft. So for example, Gaia is a spacecraft, so let's just go ahead and visit Gaia. And uh, we could uh, kind of um, use the mouse scroll wheel to move closer and closer to Gaia, or we can also just use Control G, which brings us um, automatically next to our focus object. So as you can see here is Gaia with its nice uh, reflections and the sun shield, uh, the solar array, the two fields of view here, etc. So what I'll do now is I will uh, um, activate, uh, let's just make the stars a bit less bright. Yeah. So I'll activate uh, the uh, locations. And as you can see here uh, for Gaia, we have the field of view one here, the field of view two here, also the sun shield, which is here, etc. So locations are basically positions uh, in objects. Uh, in the case of Gaia, we marked uh, the two fields of view and the sun shield, but maybe we can also visit the Earth. So Earth, let's move closer. And as you can see here, we have the continents, North America, South America, the oceans, etc. We also have some cities. So for example, uh, the capital cities uh, are here. Um, yeah, this goes in tandem with the uh, country, country lines. So as you can see now, I just activated country lines. Let's uh, make, make the lines a bit less uh, prominent. So I'll just uh, make them, yeah, that's about right. So as you can see for the earth, we have the country lines and they also work in the night uh, side of the earth. Uh, let's visit the moon, which has uh, information or positional information of the craters. So as you can see, you can basically uh, inspect or explore the location of the craters of the moon, also the seas, etc. So for example, um, the dark side of the moon has this uh, Mare Imbium, 
people yeah mad at no no beam etc etc um okay so if we um, zoom out a bit and maybe focus on the sun uh, there's also this asteroids type uh, these are basically asteroids of the asteroid belt and as you can see there's a few orbit lines for these asteroids and also the, um, the asteroids themselves are represented uh, so uh, to be able to better see that I will just start time and increase its uh, speed and as you can see all of these dots here uh, are asteroids so as you can see this goes around all the way around on the solar system um, next up, uh, star clusters. So this is um, the Milky Way star cluster catalog, and as you can see, we've got a few of them. Uh, the star clusters we can select them. So for example, we see here is the Hyades, and we can explore them just by getting closer. Uh, this uh, brings us to labels. I'll just disable labels because it's cluttering now the image uh, a lot. So just um, go off labels, and here, these are the Hyades, and I'll use these to explain the proper motion lines or velocity vectors. So I'll activate this, and as you can see, lots of um, arrows are now represented, and this uh, basically is the direction of the velocity, so the direction and speed of the stars. Here, when we um, click on this, a new section appears, which has some extra options for these velocity vectors, so the number factor, this controls basically how many stars we represent or how many uh, proper motions we're representing and also a um, uh, length factor which is uh, basically how long they are also we can uh, color code um, the arrows uh, let's make these lines a bit thicker okay we can color code the, the uh, arrows um, i'll just mute okay it's fine um using different um, criteria, for example, the direction. And here you can see that all of the stars of the Hyades go in the same direction and they are basically all the same color. You see in the background, there's all sorts of colors depending on where the stars are going. Also, uh, we can color code them by speed. So this is basically the uh, scalar uh, property of speed. Then we can also um, uh, annotate them whether they have uh, radial velocity or not so if they have radial velocity they will appear in blue if they don't uh, they are red next up is the redshift so this is the line of sight velocity and uh, in this case it's from the uh, point of view of the sun so if i move around the camera the color stays the same but we can also do that for for the uh, point of view of our camera so when i click that as you can see, as I rotate around, the color changes because the uh, line of sight is changing all the time when we move the camera. <clears throat> and uh, what we can also do is um, show the arrow heads or not. So we have this uh, checkbox here, uh, which basically controls this uh, setting. Okay, so um, next stop, uh, I'll just uh, remove the clusters. Okay, now the clusters are off and uh, I'll activate the meshes. So right now we all, so we all we only uh, have one mesh uh, loaded into Gaia Sky. So let me just focus on the sun. The sun is here. So the mesh that we are uh, now uh, seeing is a uh, dust map, uh, basically. So what uh, it means is that um, uh, someone has uh, created this isosurface which is what these meshes are uh, from a dust map so the dust map has a uh, density values of dust uh, at each uh, position so it's basically a 3d structure with uh, a density value at each of the uh, locations and uh, using the marching cubes algorithm you can extract isosurfaces and so means that uh, on the surface uh, the value of the density is the same so this would give us something like this which is a dust map of the solar neighborhood and if we keep zooming out, we'll see that we are uh, now already seeing the um, galaxy, the Milky Way model. And we can disable the meshes. And also we can disable the Milky Way only with this um, button here. So this will um, 
remove the Milky Way, and this also works for the um, uh, sky map background. So I'll enable this again, and you will see that. Uh, oh, maybe I zoom in a bit more. So this uh, sky map uh, on the background also uh, is tied to this uh, type of object. So let's just uh, exit uh, Milky Way again. And as you can see in the background, there's lots of stars. But these are not stars, these are actually galaxies uh, of the nearby galaxies catalog. And these, uh, these galaxies have uh, this type here, which is galaxies. So we can mute them by uh, using this button. Also, there's uh, here nebulae. So for example, let me just look for one of these. Uh, for example, the Horsehead Nebula. Uh, let's uh, type in Horsehead Nebula. And uh, we selected it and I'll just um, uh, move closer to, to it. So this is uh, in the direction of Ryan. Um, let's see, where is it? Oh, it's here, it's already. We're getting closer and closer to it. So yeah, that's it. So as you can see, that's the horse set. And um, the type of these objects is this one. So uh, you can use these to uh, enable them or disable them. Okay, so let's get back home by uh, pressing home, the home button on our keyboard. Next up, we have uh, three grids. The equatorial, ecliptic, and galactic grids. So these represent the three most important or most commonly used uh, reference systems in astronomy. So um, the equatorial uh, will present us with an equatorial grid in red. The ecliptic uh, re represents the ecliptic grid in green. This is the plane, basically, on of the uh, where the, the orbits of the planets are in our solar system. And uh, the galactic grid, which uh, has the fundamental plane uh, set to the uh, uh, Milky Way uh, disk. And it's in blue. Also, um, let me focus on the sun. Let's zoom out a bit so that the sun is just uh, like any other star. Okay, we have this um, type here, which is axis. Uh, when a grid is uh, being displayed, we can also see the where the axes are pointing. And we control that with this type. So now, uh, in the galactic grid, we see that the axes align very, uh, very well with this grid. We can also uh, remove this one, and you see that the grid and the axis disappear, and I'll uh, activate the equatorial grid. And as you can see, new axes appear, which are aligned perfectly with, the, with this grid. So, uh, the axis basically uh, are a way to orient yourself also. Uh, if the grid is not enough, then you can activate the axis and they are always at the um, at the origin, which is at the sun. Okay, um, we have labels, which are basically uh, object names. Uh, we have titles, which is... Uh, are these titles? Where are the titles? Yeah, so for example, this, this thing here uh, it, it tells us solar system, so let's focus on the Earth and escape. And now, we, as we get closer to the Earth, this changes to Earth. So the titles are basically positional uh, information that you see here at the bottom. So we are, uh, we just exited the solar system now, uh, and it uh, tells us the Milky Way. So uh, this kind of thing. Uh, by default, I think there's just a six or seven different titles. So it's not much, but we could add more. Uh, back home, orbit lines. So these are obviously the orbit lines, as you can see now. This is the solar system, you don't see much. But once you um, activate the orbit lines, you see uh, exactly where each planet is. Um, this we have already seen. Uh, these are constellation lines, so you see in the background the constellations and also the boundaries uh, between the constellations. The constellations are attached to the um, real 3D positions of stars. So uh, when we zoom out, we see that uh, the lines get distorted a lot because uh, these constellations were created obviously from the point of view of the Earth, so they don't work uh, really well from 
uh, other uh, points of view uh, in the galaxy. And uh, let's remove the um, uh, boundaries. And if we uh, set the camera free and increase time a lot, you will see that the constellation lines also move around with the stars. So they are really attached to the stars. And for example, now if you travel to the sun, you would see what the constellations will look like uh, in this year. So 273,000 uh, years. So the sky would look like this and the constellations are totally messed up because the stars move a lot, uh, especially in long uh, baselines. Okay, so Control R brings us to the current date and as you can see the constellations are uh, identifiable, uh, identifiable again. Uh, constellations. Okay, so next up is uh, the ruler. Uh, this is basically a way to measure distances between objects. So I'll activate the orbits uh, so that I can find the moon. And I'll activate the ruler now. I'll attach one ruler end to the Earth. So I'm using the um, right mouse button to bring up this context menu. Attach one this here. And the other one I'll attach to the moon. So attach the ruler end one to the moon. And as you can see now, we see this ruler with the distance. And I'll decrease the speed a lot because we were in cosmic speeds and we need something a bit slower and I'll start time and as you can see as the moon and the earth move this uh, distance is updated automatically if we disable the ruler this disappears okay uh, we have also uh, particle effects this is just a camera effect thing uh, I'm not sure if you can see it, it depends on the quality of the video, but um, it's uh, basically a particle effect uh, system that uh, informs you of whether the camera is moving or not. Sometimes it's difficult to tell. Um, next we have uh, atmospheres. So I click on this, uh, the atmosphere of the Earth is gone. Also clouds, so for example the, the cloud layer of the Earth is a separate object and I can remove it by uh, clicking on this. And um, we've seen axes already, we've seen uh, proper motions and finally there's this others uh, category which is for objects which don't fit on any, in any of uh, the other uh, types. So this, um, this is the end of our tutorial. Uh, today. Um, thanks for watching and until the next time.